get it. Welcome, welcome. You are listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. It's a lovely day across the USA. I'm Spit Face. Please welcome our host, the voice lady of sports talk, Jill Smith. How is it your way, Miss Jill? Oh, good morning, good morning. Well, you know, we had a little cold front that came in a couple of days ago. So, you know what, we're in the what, 70s right now, so, um, you know, for some people, that's lovely weather, you know. Uh, you know how we're Floridian. We've been in the sun so much. When it starts getting cold in the 60s, we're ready to break out the fur coats. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, hey, you need an excuse to wear a fur coat in Florida. <laughs> well, now it's 78 degrees here, so we're doing oh, fine. Oh, hey, you ain't wearing your head. <laughs> nah, nah. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, uh, this week on Shout Out, we have music from Lady uh, Adrena, will she find her shining star? Get the cold feel of the mute button. First lady, we're ready. What you saying? Each week we try to figure out what is going on in the sports world, not the plays of the week, more like the players of the week. Are they trying to tell us something? So we ask, what you saying? Fly, little birdie, fly. Time keeps on slipping into the future. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. So I want to fly like an eagle to the sea. Fly like an eagle, let the spirit carry me. I want to fly, fly right into the future. The little birdies known as the New York Yankees wish they could fly far, 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 far away, going down 3-0 and against the Houston Astros. After the Yankees let a catchable ball drop in the outfield, Chase McCormick made them pay by slicing one over the right field wall as Houston eyes a commanding 3-0 ALS ALCS lead. Is this the tale of two teams crossing like ships in the night? Are the Yankees about to get swept by the Astros? Are the Astros simply the better team? Should New Yorkers start rooting for the Astros given Houston was founded by New Yorkers Brother Augustus Chapman Allen and John Kirby Allen of New York City. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Rest in peace. Bernard Hopkins, Roy Jones Jr. and the Steve Miller Band are asking, what you saying? Oh, yeah, it's a tale of two teams crossing like shits in the night. The Yankees were already struggling prior to making it to the playoffs. Yeah, we already know that. But, Smith face, I just hate to say it. The Astros are light years a better team than the Yankees. <laughs> light years better than the Yankees. They are uh, they, basically they're a more complete team. The Astros, you know, they they have um, pitching, hitting, power, and defense. Dusty Baker has always been a good coach. Maybe this is the year he finally wins a World Series title that has eluded him twice already. Three times may be the charm. You remember he lost in 2002 when they just needed to win, what, one more game when he was the coach of the San Francisco Giants? And last year he lost to the Atlanta Braves. I I think it was 4-2. You know, Baker has the most wins among managers who have yet to win the World Series. So. Uh, that's quite interesting. But you know what? He's out coaching Aaron Boone. You know, Baker has been pulling the right, uh, making the right moves, um, you know, being able to manage his um, pitching staff. They got a great um, bullpen. And the Yankees, man, they got a plethora of problems. And most of it really is their offensive incompetence. They are completely not hitting the ball. They have not scored an earned run in 19 innings. The last earned run was in the eighth inning of game one in Houston. My goodness. Their offense is non-existent. I mean, you would think game three, which really was a must-win game, they only had three hits, less six runners in scoring position. I mean, the Yankees are either what? Popping out, striking out. And poor Aaron Judge. I mean, you talk about what the potential MVP of the league has been struggling in the playoff. 
You know, and the, fun, the, the sad part about it, you know, these Yankee fans, they don't give a damn because they booing oh. Aaron Judge. He's been booed. He was booed against the um, the Mariners, oh. and now he's getting booed against the Houston Astros. You know, his first booed, he was uh, in game three. He struck out three straight pitches, and he, caught, he was caught looking at a fastball. When he walked back to the dugout, there was a whole bunch of boos. And then he, he, he <laughs> then in the eighth inning where there was um, with two people were on two two batter two basemen were on and uh, it was two outs at the bottom of the eighth and you know what he hit a weak ground ball <laughs> to the third baseman and that was it he really got booed it's it's you know and it's so funny because um, uh, Bob Costa. He just couldn't believe that they were booing him. He really couldn't believe it. He doesn't, he don't know, he doesn't know anything about New Yorkers and, and New York fans. It's what have you done for me lately? It ain't about what you've been doing. we in the playoffs. And this is all about the Yankees. They were supposed to get to the World Series. And you know what? It looked like it's not going to happen. Now, I'm not going to say that they're going to get swept. But they could get swept. Okay. <laughs> I, look, I ain't gambling on that because it's a possibility. If they continue, if they continue hitting the ball the way they're not hitting the ball, they will get swept in, in today's game. That is for sure. Now, um, and you know, Judge really has come up small, and the team really needs him to be a big hitter. And the thing is, he's striking out even when he was in his home run streak. Trying to, um, you know, be the the um, a American League king of home runs. He was getting walks. He was walking. He had a good eye. I don't know what happened to him. He feels pressure that he needs to swing all the time. So I I, I just don't know what happened with these bats. You know what? The Yankees really, if you look at it, the latter part of the season, they were not playing well at all. Anyway, going into the playoffs, the Astros were playing well. So, you know, it, 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 it's not surprising that the Astros are beating the Yankees. And I think the Astros have always had the Yankees number anyway to begin with. So, but anyway, you know, I, I'm not, I, I mean, the Yankee fans probably will root for the Astros. And it's not because <laughs> of the Allen brothers who found the Houston, but it will be because we know that uh, they're not going to root for the root for the Phillies. <laughs> so if the it would be like the Phillies are going to meet the Astros in the World Series. So normally they will root for the American League team, and that will be the Houston Astros, because we already know there is no way, no way that the Yankees are going to win four straight games against the Houston Astros. So they're not going to the World Series. So they will be rooting for the Astros. All right, Spitface, what you saying? Uh, you know, I, you know, I, I, I'm like, uh, uh, you know, I'm looking at the fact that the, the New Yorkers mm-hmm. at least can, you know, can say we made you Houston. Because <laughs> <laughs> the Yankees, you know, the odds are like uh, they are close to uh, winning the lotto. You know, winning the lotto, coming back. And uh, but you know they have a you know uh, 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 the Yankee fans you know uh, the most that you can hope for is that somehow they they win this next game and maybe 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 squeeze out another but it, it don't look good it don't look good as a matter of fact. Uh, I heard that the, the the witches were giving the Astros they broom. Because <laughs> they would look at looking at us weak. And, um, you know, there's absolutely no pressure on the Astros. Not when you got a 3-0. to o. And, you know, I think, First Lady, the last time a team uh, – you know, came back from three down to, to actually win a series, uh, it was against the Yankees. <laughs> you know? 
And, uh, you know, so I kind of think that, you know, like I said, it, it, it's, you know, fate is the fickle finger of fate is not going their way. But, you know, Dusty Baker, it's hard not to root for a Dusty Baker team because, you know, he has had some heartbreaking, you know, uh, losses and, uh, you know, and it's just really a, a great classy coach. And you know, what he's done with the Astros and, uh, you know, just, has really just been, been like a, a super job. So, uh, you know, I, you know I, I, I'm an old town, you know, Cubs, White Sox kind of guy, you know, growing up in Chicago. But I got to hand it to them Strohs. They, they look like, they, uh, like they, they're on the uh, ascension to, to, to getting dusty his first World Series. So, first World Series win. So, I, I'm I, I'm going to go stroll. And New Yorkers, you know, like you said first, they ain't moving for the Phillies, you know, no kind of way. So, you might, you know, you don't have to jump the band. Well, you know, I kind of think they done jumped on the bandwagon already, you know, cause with, their, with the blue birds coming out. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I think the question is, what kind of adjustments are they going to make in the offseason? Who are they going to bring in? Because they need to, uh, 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 you know, uh, A-Rod ain't coming back. You know, <laughs> they need somebody. You know, they, they need somebody who, who can put some life in that team, uh, especially after, the, you know, if they get swept, they, you know, uh, I don't get that they have to do some wholesale, you know, uh, changes, but, but, but they need something. They need something. And um, so, hey, uh, like I said, the, the, the witches have been giving away their brooms to the Astros, so the, the, the stew might be brewing for a squeak. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just, you know, I was looking forward for the Yankees to have a great year. And, you know, but it's all about the playoffs and the um, – they struggle to beat the Mariners, and they they just can't beat those Astros. It's just I don't understand why their bats just become silent. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm not giving the the, uh, the Astros have great pitching. I mean, and the Yankees pitchers really haven't pitched that badly, to be honest. Which is just that their bats are not hitting the ball. They keep striking out or popping up, so that means they're missing. So anyway, we'll hope that they can at least salvage one game. And hopefully they can win tonight. If not, you know, like I said, they'll be swept and get the brooms out in New York City. All right, Spitface, <laughs> over to you. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years rocking my peers and putting suckers in fears, making the tears rain down like a monsoon. Listen to the bass go boom. Explosion, overpowering, over the competition I'm towering. Beck and shout when I drop these lyrics that make you call the cops. Don't you dare stare. You better move. Don't ever compare me to the rest that all get sliced and diced. Competition, paying the price. I'm going to knock you out. Huh? Mama said knock you out. Huh? We are talking about the knockout punch to the New Orleans Saints. Hope of righting the ship after losing to the Arizona Cardinals. The Red Rooster, a.k.a. Andy Dalton, threw intercept through three. Three interceptions, including two pick sixes. To his credit, Andy Dalton threw four TDs, but the two pick sixes pretty much knocked them out of the game. Was the return of Andre Hopkins and his 103 receiving yards pretty much overshadowed by the defense skipping into the end zone for scores? Did the Raiders start looking at drafting a new Oh, wait, uh, 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 that was the wrong one. Uh, is there a quarterback controversy? Is there a quarterback controversy in New Orleans? If not, should there be? Leroy Satchel Page, Walter Buck Menon, and James Cool Papa Bella asking what you saying. First lady, I'm going to tell you, I am disappointed about the New Orleans Saints. I had them high on the list as, you know, uh, basically squatting down Tampa Bay and uh, leading that division and 
you know, having a strong playoff run. And it ain't looking good for that prediction. And, it, you know, I'm, I, let me just add it on, you know, uh, I had it that Jameis Winston would be the comeback player of the year. <laughs> and all of all of that, you know, was like good night. I, I, you know, I don't know if someone threw some voodoo hoodoo in the gumbo, <laughs> but uh, the the Saints just, <clears throat> I, I, I'm just like, man, what? Who that? Who that did that <laughs> to to the to the to the Saints? To the Saints, because it is, it ain't looking good for them. And you know, you. Uh, <sighs> You know, I'm looking at and, and Andy Dalton, who, you know, one of the pick sixes, he, he was just flat out unlucky. You know, you, you know, whenever it bounces off a player and, and bounces into the defender's hands and they skip it to the end zone, you know, that that's more of a, you know, just, you know, just, I, I call that, that, that's just a bad break. But, uh, the, and then the second interception, why, why were y'all even throwing that ball? You know, I mean, you know. So, um, you know, I, I, I really think, uh, and yes, there is a controversy. You know, uh, Dalton and Winston, you know, uh, it, it's like, you know, uh, who you really want to go with. You know, you kind of say that, you know, like they said, Dalton did score, you know, four touchdowns, but them two pick sixes, you know, just kind of, you know, just, you know, just did them in, and they could not recover from that. But you kind of go, you know, uh, you know, Jameis got hurt. I can't say he was playing all that well, and you know, I I, I would not want to be the coach. I put it like this: the coach, I I, do, I would not want to be the coach because right now, what do you do? You know, what do you do now? I think they're gonna ride with Dalton. But you know it, it, it's it's a tenuous situation. First lady, what you say? Well, I kind of disagree with you on this matter. Um, I don't think it's a quarterback controversy um, um, because Jameis Winston is injured, so. What is the controversy? If he can't play. Uh, Andy Dalton, we all know Andy Dalton is no, is not going to be a future quarterback for the Saints. Now, if you want to talk about controversy, maybe Taysom Hill and Andy Dalton should have like, who would have been the backup after Jamison? Maybe that's a controversy there. But as far as between Jamison's, Jameis Winston and Andy Dalton, that's not a controversy. Jameis Winston would be the starting quarterback. So uh, I, I don't see <laughs> – what can I say? I don't see a quarter controversy. I mean, the issues with the um, Saints is also on the defensive end because their defense has been the poorest than they normally are. You know, they have a 2-5 and five record, and we expected the um, Saints to be vying for that division lead against the Bucks, you know, and uh, I mean they're not out of it cuz the division the unfortunately the Bucks are what 3 and 3, so they're not out of it. But um I just think the Saints got hit with uh Jameis, you know, he was coming off of his ACL injury in 2021 and now he has ankle and back injuries. And you know, obviously he what he didn't play that well in the first game either. But I, th- I think you can attribute it to uh, the injuries because if I remember doing the off season and going into preseason, I remember reading a report. One of the reporters who follows the team beat writer, he was shocked to see that Jameis was still limping, and um, and um, I think we I talked about that in the preseason. I we I vaguely remember talking about that. So I don't think Jameis has ever been healthy since he had his ACL injury. So they got to look, they got to get their act together um definitely before things um go real real left because they are already starting to go left with a, like I said a 2 and 5 record. Now we talk I'm going to talk about the Cardinals a little bit. I mean with DeAndre Hopkins back in the lineup, the Cardinals offense really looked better. 
even though, you know, there was two pick six. <laughs> there was two pick six, but regardless of that, that's right, because remember Andy Dalton was the one who threw those two pick six. So, I mean, but um, uh, Kyler, you know, he only had uh, one passing touchdown, but they had two rushing touchdowns. And that's the re- exact result of Hopkins being in the line- lineup. Because when you have that deep threat, you know, you, you have, you, you're able to do more play action. And that really makes your play action and your rushing, um, your rushing um, schemes a lot easier to run and much better to run. And, you know, Kyler could be, you know, difficult to contain Kyler. But, um, I mean, the offense wasn't at tip-top shape, but it was at least better than it has been for a long time since they started the season. So, you know, <laughs> and Kyler, and you saw Kyler was yelling at Kingsbury. They really got it. You know, they was he was barking at his coach, kind of disrespectful. But, I mean, I know those things happen. But, um, so, I, you know, DeAndre Hopkins is back. So I think in time the Cardinals will get better with time, you know, as they continue to acclimate Hopkins into the offense. But the Saints, Man, they keep Andy Dalton. You get you get you get the best of two worlds. You <laughs> get the interceptions. Look, they kind of remind you of Jameis. <laughs> you know, when they always <laughs> say about Jameis Winston, he was on the other side. He 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 played for the other side because he gave so many interceptions. So you know, <laughs> Dalton. I mean, how many times you have the back? And it was a back to back pick six. We're not talking about pick six at the beginning of the game. It it, it was. Back to back pick six. And I can't remember. They said that has not happened, and I forgot what last time it happened. Mm. Uh, but you back to back pick six. I mean, that's kind of crazy. So anyway, you know, you go whole season. Teams don't have a pick six, and the, and the uh, Cardinals had back to back. So that look, there is no controversy regarding Andy Dalton being the uh, being the quarterback. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no controversy. You know, and, you know, and, and you're saying that uh, Andre Hopkins get acclimated. Uh, he already had. He got 103 yards. <laughs> well, going, I'm just saying you're I'm right. Going, but, let, but I'm that's going, don't, I'm going. Don't let him get acclimated, my God. Well, you know? I mean, that was you know. I think that was more. On uh, um, adrenaline, because you really don't know. You know, he, that was his first time being out. That's what I meant. You know, he, he, you're right. He had 103 yards, but like I said, he, he still got time to go. So that's what yeah, I'll say. They looking, still could get better. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first lady, please take us to break. Stay tuned. Coming up next. We'll have a performance from Lady Ad- Adria. Ad- What's it, Adrian? Adriana? Adrian. <laughs> Shout Adrian. out part one. Let me get the young lady's name correct. All right. We'll see you on part one of Shout Out. The music flows in from around the globe to get a shout-out from the panel. First Lady, I can't wait to hear the music from Lady Adrena. On Shout Out, we feature new independent artists who are looking to find their shining star. If we like what we hear, we'll give the track a shout-out. If we don't like it, we hit the mute. Today we are featuring Lady Adrena from Jackson, Mississippi. They say, quote, vocalist and songwriter, Adrena Palmer, a.k.a. No, Adrian Palmer, a.k.a. Lady Adrena, was born May 24, 1980, in Jackson, Mississippi. Her singing career began at age five in County Line Baptist Church and has continued to flourish. In April 2008, Adrena completed her first single, What's Good for the Goose? The single was released to the media and received overwhelming responses. Cheating on the Backstreet from her album, Thoughts of a Woman, was released in March 2010.
prior to the album being released August 1st, 2010. All right, so let's hear from this season. Lady Adrena, let's hear Recipe for the Blues. Shout it out 
And Spitface, you shouting it out, or you going to hit the mute button? I, I'm going to shout it out. I thought the, you know, that that she put together a nice little blues recipe there, and then you know she did have cheating on the back street. <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts of a woman, so you know, yeah, hey, you know, in her yeah, in, in in her list, so 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 you never, you know, you never know. But I'm giving it a shout out. I thought it was some good old fashioned blues. I'm going for it. Okay, all right, yeah. We um, definitely will hear from Miss Adrienne, Adrina, Lady Adrina, on part two of Shout Out, feature one of her other bluesy tracks. But you know what? I just know we're not talking about the blues when we're talking about this person. Well, we're talking about the sound of my favorite underwater friend. It's time for Flip It. All right, Flipper. View to the delight of Raider Nation. It seems that Magic Johnson is set to become a minority owner at a billion dollar price tag. Is this a good move for Magic Johnson or a better move for the Raiders? The fan, great move for Magic Johnson and for minorities in the NFL. You know, First Lady, I was looking at it and you know, uh, you know, any time uh, a minority is able to have a ownership part in the NFL it is really, you know, like a great thing. And because, uh, one, uh, it helps crack that barrier, uh, you know, the old boys club. Because it's kind of hard for a team uh, to have that old boys club mentality when you have uh, uh, one of the owners or, or the owner's group, you know, uh, 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 come from the black community, the, uh, the, uh, the Latinx community, uh, 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 a woman, you know. And uh, you know, even though there have been, been a couple of, of, of women owners, but it, but it helps break that up. And uh, it, it gives a, a shot that, uh, uh, an owner can have a, that uh, a someone from a minority community can actually be a full owner. Because I look at it as uh, Magic Johnson's next step is to become, you know, Magic want to be, be the owner. He want to be the main owner, not just a have a, a minority share. He wants to be the big guy. And so this is a you know, great move for Magic to get into that arena and uh, you know, and I'm glad that he he jumping in, you know. Uh, and it's not basketball, you know. And you know, the Raiders need a little magic. <laughs> they, they, they can stand, but but it really, you know, it, it starts. Uh, you know, it's a long way to go, but you got to start somewhere. And uh, you know, uh, magic has. Uh, uh, been able to 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 make a few moves that that uh, you know that that others have not, and uh, so uh, you know I, I I wish him well, and I don't know about the team. <laughs> you know I'm like you know Magic could be, but, but, you know I, I would have preferred for him, to him to be a be an owner of the Cowboys. That would have been interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sitting up there with old plantation on the Jerry Jones. I, I, that would have been fun. <laughs> you know, but uh, I think it's a great move for Magic and uh, for minorities in general in the NFL. First lady, what you say? 
Well, I, you know, obviously I agree with you on that. I, I mean, it is definitely a great news for a minority to be a minority owner. And we need more minorities, in particular African-American owning shares of an NFL team. I'm not just talking about any minority. I'm talking about African-American owners because the league is 70% black. And like you said, there needs to be that shake up in that old boys club network. You know, um, you know, a minority, a, a, a minority owner usually won't move the needle. But we are talking about Magic Johnson. Who, you know, we're talking about Magic, the Magic Man. You know, he's not going to be a silent minority owner. Uh, he's going to be very vocal, and that's why I think it's a great move for him. Great move for um, the NFL in general, to be honest with you, because he'll be able to voice his concerns regarding the different issues within the league. Even though he'll be coming from a um, minority owner, and I don't mean because of his race or anything, we're talking about he's not going to have the full um, ownership of the team. And like you said, he likes to own the full ownership of the team. He did it with the Dodgers. And um, it, 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 it's, it, he has experience already being a minority owner. Remember, he was a minority owner with the Lakers, and, and he had to give up his um, share uh, of the Lakers. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think I forgot what it was he had to give it up for. But um, I think when he became a... Um, I think when he became a GM or vice president, I can't remember exactly why he had to give up his Lakers um, stake. But uh, regardless of that, um, he's done this before. And I can say he runs. He's the he's he's part of the ownership in the Dodgers, and he's done this. And I think it's like I said, we got to shake up this old boys network. We just can't continue to have old white men running NFL teams especially in a league that is 70% black. And that's the reason, I don't know if you, you know, the, the um, NBA, they start, they remove the term owners from their team as governors. I think the NFL needs to do, because you're talking about, it, you know, one of the previous owner, I already said that he was like running the um, the plant. What is the, the term that he used? It gave the it alluded that he was running the plantation like these they're owners over all these black men. So you know that's so we just need to get more minorities and more African Americans being more involved with ownership in the NFL just to balance it out. Just to not even to balance out because it's never going to be balanced out, but at least to just have different points of views from black people that's going to be in um, positions that can make change. That's all I'm saying, Spitface. All right, all right. But you know this is flipping where we flip the script. Let's defend. Better move for the Raiders, especially after the stink from the Gruden era and a team headed for a possible rebuild. Players will want to come to the Raiders knowing there's a touch of magic. You know, First Lady, the uh, uh, we don't know how things will shake out with Magic Johnson um, and his group uh, having a, a minority share of the Raiders. Uh, we hope the best that it'll be empowering and make a big difference. But it's a super move for the Raiders because after, you know, all the fallout from the Gruden era, which is still lingering, which is still lingering, Okay, because it, you know, it looks like the Raiders are going nowhere fast, you know, and uh, uh, I think they did a, a smart move with the new coach, but uh, the, they, they're, they're in a rebuild, not just uh, 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 not just the team, but the organization itself. And for what the Raiders are going to need in that rebuild, they Magic Johnson is. It's almost better than, than a top player. No one, you know, as you said, 70% of the NFL is black. Knowing that you got a guy like him on that on the governor team, 
<laughs> on the ownership team, that is attractive to a lot of players because they have a lot of respect for Magic Johnson, his overall career, his business acumen. Well, you know, good or bad, you know, true or not, a a lot of people have a lot of respect for for Magic, and he's made a point of not selling him that. And coming in um, uh, to the Raiders, that is, and you know, and you know, there there are, <laughs> there are some there are still some Magic Johnson fans who who they would they'd watch the Raiders just because cause he because he's part owner of the team. They're like, you know, I want to see what Magic can do with the Raiders, and then Raider Nation. Oh my God, <laughs> Raider Nation is gonna go crazy. Ha, you know, have have. Oh my God, you know, they're gonna try to get him to play quarterback. You know, <laughs> they go Magic get on the field, suit up. You know, but uh, uh, I, I think it's a, a, a because you know one. Uh, you know, the opportunity may be with the Raiders, but any team, you know, that Magic Johnson would have sought out uh, uh, ownership and, it, and, and that if it was available, would have been like, hey, you know, uh, well, not any team, because uh, uh, the Panthers, I don't care who, who came in, <laughs> wasn't going to help them out, and uh, maybe Washington, too. So, uh, you know, I, I can't get ridiculous about it. But uh, a great, uh, a better move for the Raiders. Like I said, after the, 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 the Gruden era and that whole organization is going through a rebuild. Perfect timing for them. First lady, defend. This is definitely a better move for the Raiders because Magic is a businessman and he knows how to win. If you remember, the Dodgers were struggling and the league had to officially take over the Dodgers in 2011. Mm. Magic Johnson's led the Guggenheim Baseball Management Group buying the L.A. Dodgers for $2.5 billion in 2012. Now, after that, the Dodgers became very profitable and they started to win games, and they actually won a World Series. So the Raiders should be very presently surprised how instrumental Magic Johnson can run a team, even if it's only going to be in a minority, as a minority owner. Because the one thing about Magic, he knows how to run a business, and I'm quite sure um, the Davis. Uh, Mark Davis will listen to Magic and his group, and um, I, you know because you know remember now the Raiders is a family-owned business, but the fact that they're allowing Magic Johnson to bid for this um, minority ownership, they feel that they need help, and I think they can use Magic Johnson's help because everything he touches is all about winning. Everything he does is win, 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 this man knows how to build businesses. And say what you want to say. The Raiders is an organization. It's a business. They're in Las Vegas, so they got the fan base. You know, that was one of the concerns. You know, it was Oakland Raiders where they have that same fan base in Vegas. And Vegas is becoming a town now where people want to bring teams there. They talk about bringing, you know, LeBron said he wants to bring an NBA team to Vegas when he retires. So Vegas is a hot spot. So Magic will know what to do, and hopefully the Davis, Mark Davis and them will listen to him, and I'm assuming they're trying to get him in there. So they want to be able to take some of his advice and learn how to market the team, how to build up the team, and um, eventually the team will be playing well because, like I said, Look what he did to Dodgers. The Dodgers was on the brinks of bankruptcy and being controlled by the league. And look where they are now. So Magic Johnson knows what to do. And the Raiders, <laughs> you're lucky to get Magic Johnson if that deal goes through because you need him. <laughs> Take us to break. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, you go ahead and take us to break first. I, I'm the one, look, look, I'm the one who's supposed to take us to break. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On the, uh, let me get, you know, I lost my little spot here. I'm sorry. 
Stay tuned. <laughs> Up next, butt kicking and our favorite underwater friend on Flip It Part 2. <laughs> Magic got you all excited. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hit it. Welcome back. You are still listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. Let's see what's happening on Butt Kicking, where we look at all things in the world of combat sports. Judges in Dubai F careers up. <laughs> Fighters react to Sean O'Malley, UFC 280 win over Petra Yan. <laughs> they said, people, judges in Dubai, Dubai F things up, F careers up. Okay. Well, anyway, Sean O'Malley and Petra Yan delivered a scrap worthy of fight of the night honors. And in the end, O'Malley provided, oh, actually proved to be, proved he belonged with the best batting weights of the division. At the end of three rounds, O'Malley gutted out a split decision via scores of 29-28 twice, with one judge disputing for the ex-champ Yan by the same tally. Hmm. It was a contentious decision, as reaction from fighters showed. They were heavily in favor of Yan, who reacted with shock at the decision. Some, though, though some of the fighters praised O'Malley for his breakthrough performance, here's what some fighters had to say about Sean O'Malley's win over Petra Yan at UFC 280 on Saturday at the arena in um, Dubai. I think it looks like Etihad. I can't pronounce that. Well, anyway, judges in Dubai are effing careers up. Man, Suga showed toughness and had a great fight, but he didn't win the fight. Wow, talk about UFC privilege. This is getting out of hand. This is one of the absolute biggest robberies I've ever seen. What the actual F happened? Damn, I really got, damn, I really do got to come back. But those guys would be easy money for me. <laughs> Spit face, other than the fact that I had a hell of a time reading this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a case of sour grapes, and do you have a point given in what uh, what was a split decision? <laughs> <laughs> get on, first, what do you have first, to say first, about first, this split face? <laughs> uh, you know, one of the uh, – I'm going to say yesterday is sour grapes. It is sour grapes. And they are always sour grapes when it is a split decision. Mm-hmm. And – uh, that's just whether it's in boxing, uh, you know, boxing or in the uh, in UFC. It, whenever there's a split decision, cause, uh, you know, there's always that little caveat: was it stolen? They, what was in the refs, you know, eyeballs, you know, and all that stuff. So uh, uh, it, it and it's sour grapes, uh, as you know. Uh, uh, sometimes you have to go, you got to, sometimes you, uh, there's an old saying, if you let it go to the refs, then guess what? <laughs> you know, or go, let it go to the judges, then guess what? Then it's whatever they say. So even if it's a split decision, uh, uh, you let the fight go to the judges. So, hey, you get what you get, and if two out of three say that the other guy won, guess what? You lost. That's how the game rolls. Now, uh, uh, my question is always, what's up with the judge who didn't agree with the other two, not the other way around? Wow, there was one judge who, who felt the other guy should have won. The other two judges? Well, they're not, no, that's two judges that, that outnumber the one. So what's up with the one judge that the one judge was the only one who could see uh, that uh, uh, that Jan uh, 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 outscored? You know, what's up with that judge? Did that judge have a little favoritism going, you know? So, uh, but, you know, one of the com- comments 
and we didn't put who the fighter's names were, was the one who said, damn, I really do got to come back. Both these guys would be easy money for me. Now, <laughs> you know, so so his whole analysis of the fight was I can beat either one of them. <laughs> so, you know, uh, uh, that sounds a little biased to me in itself. But uh, I think that whenever there's a split decision, split decisions are always controversial. And uh, I, I would say only – it's really rare that it truly is, quote, a robbery. Because, you, you know, you get two, two, two of the judges to agree out of three. Uh, uh, that means it was tight. That means it was tight. But you obviously didn't perform enough to win uh, the match. You just flat out did. That's all I'm saying, first lady. Well, yeah, I know the fight. You know, because it was in Dubai, it, it came on in the afternoon because I did see it go across my phone that the people won. So I know normally I do like to watch the UFC, but I like to watch it at nighttime, not during the daytime. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the same. That's all I'm saying. It's time for our favorite underwater friend. It's time for Flip It. Tampa Bay and Atlanta are at the top of their divisions with three and three records. Which one is a pretender? <laughs> Panel defense. The Falcons are playing way above expectations, and Tampa Bay below expectation. Tampa Tom will right the ship and show the Falcons are pretenders. Defend spit face. You know what? Uh, I like the Falcons. Uh, you know, I, I really do. They were counted out. They were supposed to have the worst record. and uh, Well, no, they were supposed to have the second worst record behind the Houston Texans. So, uh, you know, for, for, for Marcus and company to – to kind of get things together, be competitive, you know. You know, I I I I I think the future is bright for them, but they are playing above their expectations. Now, Tampa Bay, on the other hand, uh, you know, if there's one thing that uh, a, a, a veteran team can do, and is they can write the ship. A veteran team can come back from breakdowns, from uh, miscues, from, from a rough start, and, and get to swinging. And, you know, uh, Tampa and, and Atlanta, they're tied. So it's anybody's, it's anybody's division to win, and especially when you got the Saints stumbling and stumbling and bumbling around when they were supposed to yeah, really kind of be the ones to, to be leading the charge at the top of the division. Uh, Tom will, uh, you know, he's got the, you know, being a veteran and being Tom, Tom Brady, uh, they will get their acts together and show that the Falcons are pretenders. Now, they're playing the buddy heads. Like I said, I, you know, I go, go Falcons, but, in the long run, uh, Tampa Time will show that, at least for this season, the Falcons are pretenders. Mm-hmm. All right, Tampa Time is showing the Falcons are pretenders. Yeah, but, you know, Tom doesn't seem right, but he's a professional, and he will get his act together and focus more and become the player we know him to be. Now, to me, in the beginning, Tom just didn't seem invested in be- in the beginning of the season, you know, taking those 11 days off during preseason, going to <laughs> Robert Kraft's wedding on a Friday during a game week. Tom is going to show everyone who's been talking negative about him that he is going to be the Tom Brady that we know. He just got to get himself together. Obviously, there is some issues at home that definitely has um, – um, you know, weighed heavy on him, but Tom is a professional, and if I'm going to bet on a team, the Falcons versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, basically I'm betting on Tom versus Marcus (laughs) Mariota, all right? 
Now, there's a reason why Marcus Mariota wasn't a starting quarterback for a hot second. Now, he's doing well now, but do you expect that to last? He didn't last in Tennessee. You know, that's when Ryan Tannehill took over his job. So I don't expect Marcus Mariota to continue to have the good season he's having, and I don't expect the Falcons to continue at the pace that they're playing at. Now, uh, the good things for the Falcons, though, we'll see what happens, but they – they definitely got another game against the Buccaneers. They got to play the Ravens. They got to play the Cardinals. You know, so they still got some teams that they can, they got to beat. But I just think the Buccaneers, like you said, Spitzface, they have the, um, they they've been there before. They they're a veteran team. They're they're slow to get started, but they're going to be there at the end. And uh, I look for Tom to right the ship. I look for him to to turn on. The, uh, I just look for him to be the Tom that we know he can be. And I think once he gets, once he quiet all that noise behind him, he'll get to be the Tom that we we need him to be. And um, I'm sorry, the Falcons, they will be pretenders, the big pretenders. All right, let's flip this panel to Finn. Tampa Tom is missing the Brady Bunch, and Marcus Mario is playing like a man on a man of fire. Looks like Tom is missing Giselle, and Tampa Bay are this year's great pretenders. Spit face defense. Uh, Tom, you've given us many good years, but I think Giselle was right. He should have. Stayed in retirement, buddy. <laughs> and, you know, just like the, the great boxers, players, uh, that, there's that you, you do that one year, one year too long, and the decline hits. And as much as, you know, Tom Brady is the GOAT. He is the GOAT. But, uh the way he started the season, it, it may have been, that, you know, his plan may have been, look, uh, uh, you know, let me save my body because it's a longer season. And, you know, I don't need the preseason anyway. And we will gel along the way. Well, you know, that's starting to look kind of difficult. And, uh, you know, also, uh, you know, I, I think that, as the season goes on, Tom is going to have some some great moments, but I think Father Time has caught up with with Tom Terrific, and the Brady Bunch ain't around. Where did the Brady Bunch go? They just disappeared on time. And Tampa's defense ain't exactly you know playing like a like a team that 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 that's going to a Super Bowl. So uh, I think that there are so many question marks around Tampa Bay that uh, they've been, uh, you know, they've been given automatic props because they have Tom Brady and the, uh, you know, and and just him being the GOAT. But it looks like, uh, you know, that the Falcons, you know, they're young, they're hungry, uh, Marcus may have finally uh, hit the right team, you know. And, you know, one of the things is when you've been, you know, sometimes uh, when, you know, you you came in with hype, uh, you know, you struggled with a lot of teams, but you just held on. You proved you were, were a good backup quarterback, but all that time you were learning, and you got a lot of skills and years ahead of you. Uh, it looks like Marcus might be perfect for the Falcons. So I see the Falcons riding high, and Tampa Bay, you're pretending. You're the great pretender. That's what I'm saying, first lady. All right. Well, you know, he's the great pretender, Tampa Bay, and Tom is really pretending now because we really see – that Tom is hurting for his wife. It is clear that there is trouble, trouble, trouble at home. We never like to bring people's personal life into this football situation, but Tom looks like he misses his wife. He
he looks gaunt in the face because of he looks like he lost some weight. He 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 looks like to be a shell of himself as basically being a focused football player, and he's playing poorly. And unfortunately, Max Kellerman, you were like five years off, but looked like Tom finally hit that clip. <laughs> <laughs> He's finally hitting that cliff. Like you said, Spitface, Father Time has caught up with Tom Brady. And you know what? Because of the fact that he's always been such a focused athlete, but the fact that he's having these personal problems, that has basically he can't be as focused as he wants to be. And then because of the Father Time, he just looks so poor as a quarterback. I mean, I, it's just you know he's he's not getting that many um, throwing that many um, touchdowns and um, yeah uh, unfortunately the Tampa Bay Bucks they look like they are definitely back to the old Tampa Bay Bucks you know <laughs> um, uh, like you said where are the where are his um, the Brady bunch <laughs> they're not there you know at least what's his name. Um, uh, oh gosh, what's his why his core uh, his um oh god I don't have a uh, brain uh, fart there the Gronk right see Gronk Gronk knew it was time for him to retire see, <laughs> Tom should have taken that lead from Gronk Gronk said no I ain't coming back I've done what I needed to do I did what you know I don't need to come back I don't need to prove anything else so I don't know Tom needs to should have taken that into consideration. Because, you know, the one thing Gronk could do, too, was block. He could be on that people blocking from Tom getting hit because of the poor offensive line of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, you know, I, I just it's, I hate to see Tom Brady looking like this because he is the GOAT, but he is not the GOAT this year. And um, I can tell you this, he may and Tom may quit in the middle of the season. That's how bad mm. he looks. See, I'm being honest with you. That is how badly he looks. So anyway, we'll see. All right, Spitface, please take us to break. Mm-mm-mm. Good time, terrific. End up going out like underdog. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That's like deputy dog. <laughs> on the other side of the break, we have another performance from Lady Adrena on Shout Out Part 2. Please stay tuned. Keep your ears on those speakers. Welcome back. The music flows from around the globe to get a shout out from the crew. Spitface, over to you. All right. We have another blues performance from Lady Adrena. Uh-oh. She says, the blues chose me. Let's check it out.
Blues chose me. First lady, you giving it a shout out. First lady, are you muted? Yeah, technical problems, technical problems. Um, no, I didn't mute her. I didn't mute Lady Adrena. I'm shouting <laughs> Lady Adrena out. She knows her genre, and she's within herself, and she loves to sing the blues, so I'm shouting it out. And you can feel her spirit within the song, so I'm definitely shouting that out. She, the blues yeah. chose her. I'm shouting her. I'm shouting out the band, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, the band was kind of jamming my man on guitar to get him down with himself, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't mind checking him out. You know, I can could, I could see going out having, having a couple of drinks, you know, checking him out. They, 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 they got it together. They got it together. Mm-hmm. All right, that is the end. A shout-out. If you like what you heard from Lady Adrena, check her out at Lady Adrena. And that's A-D-R-E-N-A music.com and Old Grumpy Radio Network. If you would like to be heard or have any comments, please send your emails and tracks to talent at oldgrumpyradio.com. First lady, over to you. It's time for the picks. Well, the hardball picks, again, will resume with the World Series. Now it's time for the NFL pigskin picks. We are in week seven. Man, 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 week seven already. What do you mean after week seven? We got ten more weeks. All right, so let's go over last week's results. Spitface, you were leading again in the black with 300,000 points. Dizzy Mac and I, we keep being in that red. Dizzy Mac was at a negative 300,000 points, and I was at a negative 100,000 points. Um so that was with the upset. But you had the yeah, upset. Yeah, man, pick. that was you, and I had the five hundred thousand upset. So you know, I was not doing well. <laughs> Look, that helped me just to get to a hundred thousand. Please, a negative hundred thousand. I had only, and you know, it was looking good because I had the first two picks right, and it was downhill after that. So anyway, <laughs> the grand totals as of today, Spitface, you're leading. With 1,150,000 points, Dizzy, well, actually, I'm coming in the second with a negative 350,000 points. Dizzy Mac is at 1,650,000 points. Woo. So anyway, let's, but you know, this is, we can still turn it around. We can still turn it All you need is really one good week. All right, let's go. Winners and losers. Plus or minus 250,000 points. All right. Falcons versus the Bengals. I'm going to take the Bengals. Uh, um, you know, I, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Dizzy Mac has the Bengals. Spitface, who do you have? You know, I'm scared of this game. You know, because uh, yeah, I'm scared of this game. The Bengals should definitely win, and they at home. And, and you, know, uh, by, you know, look, they were in the Super Bowl last year. You know, and the Falcons are overachievers, but that's a tough row. I'm gonna go with the Bengals. Okay, all right, you can go with the Bengals. So we all heading with um, the Bengals. All right, Colts versus Titans. Dizzy Mac has the Titans. Who do you have, Spitzface? I'm gonna, you know, uh, I tend to go with the home team, but I'm gonna go with the Colts. Ooh, you going with the Colts? All right, no, I'm going with the Titans. Going with the Titans. Colts haven't been playing well. Definitely going with the Titans. All right. Seahawks versus the Chargers. Spitface, who are you going with? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, the Chargers scare me because they do stupid stuff, you know. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Chargers at home. All right. I'm going with the Chargers also. Now, Dizzy Matt. He believes in Geno Smith because he has the Seahawks. All right, next game, Chiefs versus the 49ers. All right. Man, them Chiefs disappointed me against the Bills, but they're not going to disappoint me against the 49 They can't lose two games in a row, so I'm going with the Chiefs. Dizzy Mack has the 49ers. Spitface, who do you have? You know, uh, if McCaffrey had been there all week, I would have went with the 49ers, but I'm going to have to roll with the Chiefs. They're not going to have two losses in a row, no. Okay. 
All right, we're going up to our props. They either over, under, push, plus, or minus 150,000. First prop, Titans, 125 rushing yards. Um, I'm going to go over. Shoot, Derrick Henry can get that if he plays well. Dizzy Mac has over. Spitface, what do you have? I'm going with the under. Okay. Dak Prescott, Prescott, 200 passing yards. Yeah, Dak is expected to play. He's coming off of that thumb injury. So we're going to see, can he get 200 passing yards? Dizzy Max say, yeah, he can. He's over. What do you say, Spitface? Against the Detroit Lions at home, mm, and Dak want to show out, I'll go over. They're playing at home? Uh, yeah, Cowboys are at home. All right. Uh, uh, this is a tough one for me. I'm going to say under. All right. Tom Terrific, two passing touchdowns. All right. <laughs> oh, no. Dizzy Mac has over. What do you have, Spitface? <laughs> Uh, uh, let me get my coin out so that uh, who, who they, I, they playing what? They playing um the Falcons? Oh, we're not. Uh, no, they're not playing the Falcons, are they? No, the Falcons are playing the Bengals. Oh, that's and, the Bengals. Uh, okay, let me see. Yeah, who Tampa play. Bay is uh, playing uh, the Panthers. Oh, they're playing man. the Panthers. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go. You know, I'm gonna go. Oh, Shoot. Last time I did a push on two, he only got one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he only got one. Um, I'm going to say push. He, I, I don't see him doing three. I just don't. He, I don't think he has it in him anymore, and I just don't see it. All right, let's move along. I think he could, I think he could luck up and, and, and go over two with the Panthers. <laughs> All right, well, the Justin Herbert three passing touchdown, spit face. I'm going to go push. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go push also because I think he can get three. Dizzy Mac has under. Cowboys, 110 rushing yards. Um, I'm going to say, ooh, I'm going to say over. That's why I don't think Dak is going to throw for over 200 yards. I think they're going to run the ball because, remember, that's what they were doing with Cooper Rush. That's the formula the Dallas have been using is rushing, 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 more so than passing. But we all know Dak likes to pass. But anyway, I'm going to go with over. Dizzy Mac has over. What do you have, Spitface? Uh, I'm going with over, but in, uh, but I'm going to go Dak is still going to go over 200 passing yards because Dak is great at padding his stats. <laughs> All right. Especially Packers, against oh. teams with losing records. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Um, Packers, Commanders, 35 combined points. Man, I lost that last week with them darn Packers. They, well, no, they, they, I can't remember. Did I lose that? Yeah. I think they they got no, over. No, no, they got over forty. They got they. It was forty combined points with the Packers, and they. Um, and I forgot the team they were playing, and they got forty two points. I had said under. Um, Dizzy Mac has under. What do you have, Spitface? Mm, I'm gonna go with the over. <sighs> Yeah, I'm going to go with the over. All right. Pick the upset. Optional. Plus or minus 500,000. I got it last week. Lions upset the Cowboys. Uh, Dizzy Mac got the upset. He's taking the uh, upset? Ooh. No, Dizzy Mac is. Dizzy That's Mac okay. is. Mac? Yeah. Lions upset Cowboy. He got yes. <laughs> So Dizzy Mac is taking it. I'm on the fence I'm passing right now. Upset. I'm You're passing, passing? On the upset. Okay. I, 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 you know, Detroit might end up having a good game, but no, they're not going to upset the Cowboys at home. I'm passing on that one. You're passing on that. Um, um, uh, Detroit, what's Detroit record? I think they won they a pass- game. They won one <laughs> game, right? <laughs> I think they uh they, I think they have won a game. 
Yeah, you know what? Four. I had said, you know, this happened to me last week. You remember I had, I decided, I reluctantly took, was it Green Bay over the, um, no, the Jets. Who played the Jets and lost? I can't remember who played the Jets and lost, and I had stated the Ravens played the Jets, right? Was it the Ravens? I can't that remember who. That was an who, upset, though. That was No, no, upset, no, but, but what I was saying, uh-huh. though, I thought the Jets could beat the team, but I reluctantly uh-huh. went with, I said it, you know, I said I, I was on the fence with that when I said I, I, ru- I wanted to go with the Jets, and I said I wouldn't be surprised if the Jets won. This game, too. I wouldn't be surprised if the Lions win this game against the Cowboys. But I am not daring as Dizzy Mac, so I am not going to take the up. I'm not. I, I'm just going to pass on this one. But I would not be surprised if they win this game because Dak's coming back. You know, you don't know how that thumb is. He get, he injured his thumb, right? It was a broken thumb or a broken hand. Yeah, uh, broken when was, thumb. They were the broken thumb. You don't know how he's going to feel throwing that football. You know, I think he's rushing back because he's a little bit concerned about Cooper Rush. But anyway, we'll see. I, I, I'm going to pass on it. I'm not adventurous like Spitface. I mean, like um, um, Dizzy Mac. All right, let's move along. Spitface, what is your top story to watch this week? The Yankees Astros. Will they get squabbed? Well, what is my top story? My top story is: Will the Eagles? Are the Eagles playing this week? No. Nope. Are they on a bye? Huh? Yes, they're on a bye. Oh, the Eagles on a bye. So I guess there ain't gonna be no story because the Eagles will still be undefeated. <laughs> 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 so my top story is really how Dak will play in his return. Since you are, since you people want to make a quarterback controversy, let's see how Dak plays when he returns. All right, join us in December as we honor our veteran women and veteran women with disabilities. To learn more, please visit honorourveteranwomen.com. Honorourveteranwomen.com. Check out our current and previous episodes at Bras, Panties, and Sports.com and our Facebook page. BP and Sports. This is Cheryl Smith, the First Lady of Sports Talk, and Spitface. You have been listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports.